uh, earlier today, there was a bunch of talk coming out of the credentials committee because they were asked to look at Saddleback Church because they have ordained women uh, for ministry. They have female pastors, which is in violation of the Baptist faith and message, which is supposedly the ruling document of the SBC. And I say that that way because, uh, well, there's a lot of people who think differently on the Baptist faith and message and are still in friendly cooperation with the SBC. But they they came out of that saying that the, the committee came out and said, hey, we want you guys to do a study uh, about what it means to be a pastor according to the Baptist faith and message, and then we will make a recommendation about their credentials. In other words, whether we refer them to the executive committee, again, committees upon committees, uh, refer them to the executive committee for getting rid of them. Um, and there was a lot of talk and a lot of people were saying a lot of harsh things. Um, and Tom Askell was one of them. Al Moeller was one of them. Now about my feelings, uh, I said it earlier in the stream, you know, if Saddleback is going to do that, I think it's a pretty clear violation of the Baptist faith and message, but I will say <laughs> that, uh, not even having really a conversation with the church on that, which at least to my knowledge hasn't happened. Um, and just the way that it was being done, uh, did not feel like the Christian way to do it, to be honest to me. It just seemed like they were just using them as a big target, an easy target to be like, look at them and, uh, going at them. And so Rick Warren, uh, came and, uh, he's there and uh because he is a southern baptist and uh he came out and this is what he had to say we'll get back over to the election here in a minute but thank you it's, all right i'm going to turn the volume up on this one you know um first everybody welcome to orange county southern baptist of 149 southern baptist churches here 90 of them started by saddleback church 90. It's crazy. This was about an hour and a half ago. You know, it's customary um, for a, a guy who's about to be hung to let him say his dying words. <laughs> I have no intention of defending myself. I have taught my kids and grandkids for years. I am most like Christ when I refuse to defend myself. Amen. The Bible says Jesus spoke not a word unto them when Pilate accused him of all kinds of things. So I have no intention. Uh, I have most of you on my mailing list anyway, and I can write you and tell you what I believe about the gift of pastoring as opposite from the office of pastoring. But I'm not here to talk about that. Lunchtime, I wrote you a love letter, and I'd like for my possibly, likely, last convention to read it to you. Kay and I you hear that? could have not built Saddleback Church to its size and influence in any other denomination. Listen to the emotion in his voice. I love Southern Baptist. I am a fourth generation Southern Baptist pastor. My great grandfather was led to Christ by Charles Spurgeon and sent to America as a church planter. Saddleback was sponsored by the North American Mission Board. I served on the staff of the California State Convention and the Texas State Convention as a teenager. Billy Graham picked me up when I was 18, and for the next 52 years mentored me because I started at 16 years old, hired by the California Convention to preach youth revivals, and I had preached over 120 uh, harvest crusades before I was 20. Billy took this long-haired, skinny Californian and mentored me for the next 52 years. Here's my love letter to you. Wow. Love because letter. I really am grateful. If this is my last convention. Because of Southern Baptist polity, I was allowed to serve one church for life. That's not possible in most denominations. And, get, and grew it to become the largest church in this convention. Because Southern Baptist gave me a passion for evangelism and mission, we baptized 56,631 new believers. And 
and as the Southern Baptist Church, sent 26,869 members overseas to 197 nations. I mean, you hear that. It's just because insane, Southern the numbers. Baptist taught me the value of a membership covenant. 78,157 members of our church signed our membership covenant after taking a four-hour membership class. Because Southern Baptist taught me to emphasize the priority of Bible study. We now have 9,173 home Bible studies in homes in 162 Southern California cities. Because Southern Baptist taught me the value of church planting, as I already mentioned, we planted 90 in Orange County alone in and Orange literally County thousands alone. around the world. Because Southern Baptist taught me to honor and love the local church, I've had the privilege for 43 years of training 1.1 million pastors. That, sorry friends, that's more than all the seminaries put together. Shots fired. I owe you all so much. So I sincerely say thank you, Southern Baptist, for shaping my life. I don't think that's an act. You know, questions. some of these pastors, they just You're never gonna act, find but another I don't, Baptist I feel agrees it. with you completely on everything. There are Baptist brothers here today who don't believe Jesus died for the whole world. But we imagine somehow get along with them. He's talking about Calvinists. So as Western culture grows more dark, more evil, more secular, we have to decide, are we going to treat each other as allies or adversaries? Second, since this is the year 2022, that means we are 2022 years and fast forward from the birth bit. of Christ. Mission in AD 33, he sent the Holy Spirit. He gets into years. I don't know what that was about, to be honest. We'll make a resolution that Baptists take the next 10 years to finish the task of the Great Commission in our generation before the 2000th anniversary of the church. Are we going to keep bickering over secondary issues? Are we going to keep the main thing the main thing? We need to finish the task. And that will make God smile. Thank you, everybody. I love you. So when I saw that, I was, oh, man, I was so taken back. Because, like, I, I've never been a fan of Rick Warren. I've, I, I'm not someone who reads his books. Like I said earlier, I had to read Purpose Driven Church for a class in Bible college, but like, I didn't like it. <laughs> like his methodology is not something that I would say is good. Uh, some of his theological viewpoints, I would disagree with obviously female ordination. I'm pretty like, I have stuff on my channel. I'm pretty wide open about my stance on that issue. Um, so does he belong in the, the Southern Baptist convention? I don't think so. Like, uh, does Saddleback belong in the SBC? No, if they're going to be going against a Baptist faith and message. But the way that he was just being attacked and the way that he has been attacked, uh, I just think is kind of shameful. Like, the, the things that people say about him. Like, you're not going to find, I've said this a couple times today, you're not going to find the scandals. Or at least to my knowledge, I don't know of any. I've never heard anyone accuse him of any kind of scandal in his character. And like, yeah, you might disagree with some of his theological viewpoints, but let's be honest. There are tons of people in the SBC who have all kinds of viewpoints about other things too.